we in a big city. This, this is uh, Harlem. This is Harlem, and, New York. And, and 126. It's not easy to repeat this market. And I know that you didn't grow up in Harlem. You from, where are you from? I'm from, from, I'm from Pleasantville, New Jersey. Born and raised. Yeah, born and raised. So, um, I'm going to be truthful. I had a salon in South Jersey. Okay. And I had big dreams for my salon. I had, a, I, had big, I had a big vision. But the area I was in didn't see my vision. Mm. I love them. That's where I'm from. Like, I wouldn't be me if I wasn't born and raised there. But it's such a big world out here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of them... Um, the mindset, the way we were raised, but it's a stagnated mindset. Wow. So they don't see my big, my big vision. I always had the vision, but I wanted the vision to be where I was from, mm -hmm. and that wasn't balancing out. So I read a book by Russell Simmons called "Do You," wow. and in the book he said you have to follow. Uh, you have to pick an area where your dreams will, you know, grow. And two of the places he mentioned was New York or California. So I said, well, I always wanted to be in New York. So I'm going to push, I'm going to push towards that. I'm going to write it down step by step. I'm going to do it and then I'm going to go. And two weeks I found, I found a job. I found an apartment and I told my mom two weeks before I left, like, I'm closing the shop, I'm leaving. But it feels yeah. better when it's not an accident, when it's a plan, right? Right. When you write it down, it manifests. Yes. When you think of it, it, it bottles. Yes. So if you write it down and you look at it daily, it'll manifest. So I ended up in Brooklyn. Mm. Culture shock. How was that? How was that for you? Culture you shock. Pleasant to Brooklyn. Culture shock. I left my car. Mm. I left my two-bedroom condo. Yeah. I left my parking space. Oh man! Yeah, I love my partner's face. Yo, and I had to learn to train. I had to learn the people. I had to learn the culture. I never met people from Belize before. I never met people from St. Lucia. Like I'm like, I never met Belizean people before. It was like I was. Everybody wanted to know where I was from, what island I was from. It's like yo, it's Brooklyn is a really culture city. And it's like sort of like segregated a little bit. Like, well, where are you from? Like, what what island you from? Now you got you need to research that. You from somewhere? I'm like, I'm American. I know who I, I know who I am. They just couldn't believe it. They like, oh, well, your features is this, your features is that. Plantation, right? It's very segregated, <laughs> yeah. and it shocked me. Like, I was in culture shock when I moved to Brooklyn, but Brooklyn welcomed me to New York. Like, it did. It welcomed me. It changed me from being soft spoken and soft like uh, having a soft backbone to having a strong backbone. Like it changed me a lot. Brooklyn do that. Yeah, I was in Brooklyn for three years and it changed my life. Brooklyn mm -hmm. changed my life. I can say that. straight to the beauty supply store and buy products, curling irons, whatever I could afford with the money that she gave me. Um, I will also go and sit and watch local hairdressers um, in the area. I couldn't afford to get my hair done, so I would just sit and watch them and learn from them and go home. How old you? I would say I was about 13. By the time I was 14, I had a chair at Classics Barbershop underneath Darielle, she was my mentor. She was my 
uh, teacher before I went to hair school. So mm -hmm. she gave me a chance at an early age. I was actually paying for a chair at 14 years old. Wow. So I thank her for that, for giving me a chance so early. I will come help her out and I will also do my friends or, you know, the guys I went to school with would get the braids. That was the Iverson area era. Mm -hmm. So I would, um, you know. So you was basically always the nicest. Yes. You, yeah. You, you was always, you know, I was always, always known for skill. Yeah, I was always known for doing hair. I always had the skill. Um, my mom would let me practice on her. You know, she would sit me in the mirror and do my hair also. So I would also learn a lot from her too. So it was just something that I took on and I just, you know, had a knack for it. And I, I wanted to make it as big as I could. So I went to school, I went to hair school after high school. Instead of going straight to college, I went straight to cosmetology school to get a trade before I went to college. Oh really? Okay. Yes. How, how was um that? How was cosmetology school? Cosmetology school was crazy. I went um, in Trenton, New Jersey. I met a lot of friends. Um, my teachers stood by me. They landed me my first professional corporate job at J.C. Penney Salon after I got my license. So that was a good thing. The shop across the street. How long was you? Uh, uh, how long have I been working? Yeah. There? Now that shop been there. That's a uh, um, that's like a historical spot over there. Um, it used to be called the Shalomar years ago. A lot of people who used to perform at the Apollo would come here to get their hair done. Okay. Um, a lot of pimps would, you know, come get their hair straight in or they would bring their I went there a few times, I was there. Yeah. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> the Shalomar is a historical spot. So, um, after the Shalomar, it was, it was taken over by um, one of my co-workers, her name is Kwame, she's an older, um, African braider. She's okay. in charge of the braiders and she had the spot for 18 years before my boss came in and merged the two. There was never, there's never a case where you'll see a braid shop and a hair salon all on one spot. It's either a braid shop or, or a hair salon. Yeah. So what she did was merge the two which was never, I never heard it done before. And you know, I noticed that when I yeah. pulled up, I said this is it's like a floors. mixture of a salon and, and an area because there's a lot of braiding uh, spots in the area. And yes. that, those are really, you know, that's just strictly just to get mm -hmm. it done. It's really not. Right. And, and I noticed in a lot of braid shops, they don't wash hair. You have to come already washed. Yeah. And if your hair is not washed, a lot of times they'll braid your hair dirty. Well, they don't try to really make it too much of a comfort zone. They and just, it's not comfortable. No, it's, no, a swap. Yeah. it's a, it's a, um, assembly line. Right? You go yeah, there, exactly. you get it braided and they don't care. They don't speak the language. They yeah. don't. Communicate is not emotional. Uh -huh. And natural sisters, it's emotional. Mm -hmm. You come in, oh, you need your hair washed, no problem. One of the stylists can wash you, blow dry you, and then we have the braider finish your service. It's a one stop shop, and I've never seen it done before. I commend my boss for that. Tia, she's she's great. Like her marketing skills is great, and um, she got a great staff over there. Like the team, I'm a manager. I'm the man. I'm the salon manager, but. Um, she got a great system going on over there, and I commend her for that. Um, my name is Rihanna Ali. I'm the winning model for Project Runway Season 12. Uh, Mika has been my hairstylist since I was 16, year old, 16 years old. Um, I first started my career in the modeling industry at the age of 17, and she's been there with me from the beginning to the end. Photo shoots, uh, video shoots, you name it, and my most popular hairstyle um, everyone loved, which was the Bob in Omarion's video featuring um, Fabulous and Pusha T, Know You Better. So it was like this kind of disheveled Bob. It was a uh, zero degree Bob, but it was very textured. And then, like a few weeks later, we saw Beyonce <laughs> with the same Bob. It was so dope. But um, one thing about Mika, she has like growing hands, and she has this thing about her where. Um, she can make one inch hair grow all the way down your back. I don't know how, I don't know where, it's just some people just have that gift of growing hair and she's one of those people and I trust her with my life. Um, my average workday is about 
a nine to ten client workday. Wow. Um, it's it's intense. It's not breezy. I make it look breezy because I've been doing it for so long. I've been behind a chair since I was 14 years old. So it's like, I make it look breezy, but when I'm done, it's just like, woosa. <laughs> like, I'm um, dealing with the clients. You know, a lot of people don't know what they want. You have to tell them what they want. A lot of people know exactly what they want, and it's impossible. You have to be almost a magician to get them <laughs> To go in their pocket, it's like wow, it's it's hard, it's hard, and it's stressful, and you're competing with people who are, you know, doing the wrong thing, mm. versus what you know is the right thing. Yeah. So it's like it's that's a fight also, but um, in the end, it's rewarding. Um, I do. I meet new clients every day. Like I said, my boss's marketing skills is crazy. So. I get a new client in my chair every day, so then they refer a new person. Trying to get an appointment with me, I feel bad sometimes because people can't get in for two, maybe three weeks. You know, sometimes I'll call them like, you know, I'll squeeze you in, you got something to do, or you want a time schedule. If you're not on a time schedule, I can take you, but if you're rushing, then today is not the day for you. But I'm trying, you know, I try to work with all my people, especially my loyal ones. I try to work with them so that, you know, they can, you know, continue to come and continue to see positive results with their hair. Uh, I mean, I, I think about things like you have 17 stylists. Yeah. And now I know the atmosphere is real, it's fast very paced. fast paced. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's a, I mean, that's the most angle you could get. I mean, this is, this mirror, you know, so yeah. I'm, I, I see that you have a high success rate. I, I'm pretty sure all your uh, clients leave. Oh, uh, satisfied. They're satisfied. What is it that you do? What's your? I don't want to know your secret, but what is it that you know? What What are some of the things you do that help everything function so well, so smooth? Number one, I do a consultation before I even touch them. I want to know what, what have you been doing at home? What products are you using at home? I talk to them. You know, I get I get them comfortable with me. And so there's, then, there's a standard. I put there's a standard for each stylist. You know, there, there's a yeah, there's a standard, and you have to find out. What they what they have been doing before they came to you, so that you can know what to do from now on. So I do the consultation first, and then when I take them to the sink, that's when I gain my trust at the sink. Um, the shampoo process is the most important process of the service. If you are not um, massaging the scalp, getting every area, making sure nothing's itching, nothing's burning, you know, making sure they feel clean, even when they they feel clean, you do another shampoo to make sure they feel extra clean so that they know that you care that if their hair is clean or not. Because if you rush in the shampoo process, that's the most important process of the service. That had people coming back. The main message I want, I want women, this is more geared to women and you know, it's good for a, a man or you know, the men to listen to this also. Um, female confidence is a a big issue whether it's um, put out in the open or not yeah. you never know if you lift in a woman's confidence by just telling her that she looks nice for the day or you know, maybe you're holding in your negative comments about her appearance mm -hmm. um, because my little small piece of the pie when they sit in my chair I see it so I have a lot of stories you know Everybody has a story to tell, but me dealing with women every day, you know, I feel like I have to assure that confidence in them that they're not being assured on an everyday basis from their husband or from their boyfriend or from family members or whatever. So I feel like if it's a one thing, one compliment you could give a woman a day, just give it to her. Because by the time they get to me, I have to fix all of that. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, and I don't mind, that's my job. I don't mind fixing that, but you know, I feel better when a woman is sitting in my chair and she's already confident, rather than me having to assure her that she is beautiful. You know, I feel like they should already come to me feeling that way. So you're not just fixing here, you're fixing self-esteem, yes. pride, everything like that. Yes, wow. I, I work on body language. You know, if I turn that chair to the mirror and you can't look in it, that's something that I got. I got to see you every week because I want to see. I want to see the progress, and I see it. Like a lot of women, you know, they'll be able to look in the mirror after a, a month or two and be like, "Yeah, you know." Uh, natural hair opposed to weave, and, and what you prefer, what you would encourage your clients okay. to work with. Um, 
when I meet a client that is um, used to wearing weaves, um, is and they tell me, oh, I never wear my natural hair. It's more of a um, insecurity. So the first thing I do is face them to the mirror. And if they can't lock eye contact with me in the mirror, then I know that it's an insecurity coming from somewhere. So I try to um, convince them that I can, first of all, you can wear the weave, but I'm going to take care of your hair underneath the weave. And I'm gonna make sure when you leave here, you wanna look as natural as possible. Um, it's a lot of TV shows that you know have girls feeling like like they have to look a certain way every day, you know, or that what they have is not enough. And I just want them to know that if your bundles don't come in the mail, that don't mean you have to cancel your appointment with me. You can still come, and I'm gonna make sure you're still good, whether it's your real hair or if it's a weave down to your butt. Like, I'm gonna make sure you gonna be confident no matter what. So a lot of people are amazed when I take the weave out and I and I blow that hair out with my product and flat iron it. They look in the mirror and they're like, wow, I never knew my hair could do that. They doubt me until I spin that chair around and then they, they be amazed. So it's like, so I put a lot of my before and after pictures on Instagram and on Facebook so that people can see that yes, I took this afro and I made her silky straight without no chemical, without no hot comb, without nothing damaging to the hair. And people are, it's the evolution now, people are getting used to um, dealing with their natural textures rather than running to the Chinaman or wherever to get the weave, you know what I mean? Or canceling plans because the weave didn't come in the mail, you know what I mean? That stuff does something to me, you know what I mean? I feel like um, we as a people need to be more confident no matter if you have a ponytail or if you weaved up for the month. Like, Type we want to appreciate um, the hard work. You know, there's a lot of people accomplishing things that they just may be overlooked. You know, but, but then when we push and we ask these questions, people see it's not just I'm just working in the salon. I'm dealing with yeah. a whole lot of things. Yeah, you know, this thing is saving lives, saving relationships, doing all kind of things. You yeah. know, like that. People um, are. are insecure people are not feeling good you know i mean even for guys guys go to the barbershop you come out the barbershop you feel a little you bit better, better yeah. so i know for, for women you know it's more that has to be done it's a longer it's uh, time you, you know yeah. even getting the appointment making mm -hmm. sure you know even you will want somebody to deal with you that does actually care right right this is true. You, you don't want somebody just cash separating you from your money and then here, mm -hmm. you know, put you out there. I, I can see, you know, by how, the way you describe everything, yeah. it's very uh, uh, critical. It's, yeah. it's like, it's, it's, it's hit or hit. You know, you can't miss when it comes to you dealing with people's, you know, emotions. <laughs> I'm really interested in about the, uh, the product that you all have. Um, I want to know how you develop it, what made you uh, come up with it. Mm -hmm. And just tell me about it. I know it's called, let us know the name, let us know. Um, so the product is called Groove By Me, Groove By M.E. Dot e. It's an all natural product. It has all natural ingredients. Um, no preservatives, no, no nothing like that. Um, it, it's an instant repair and it helps um, clear the scalp, um, moisturize the hair, detangle the hair, and add like a luster and shine that lasts for like days. So um, I came up with the product because one of my client's daughters had an issue with their scalp <clears throat> and she was going to the doctor, getting a special shampoo, nothing was working for her. And I gave it to my client or her daughter and it actually worked for her. Um, they went on vacation and I had to bottle it for her so that she could take it with her. Mm. And she paid me for the bottle and then a clip. Mm. Like, okay, <laughs> I can do this, I can sell this, um, I can try it on, you know, my loyal club customers that trust me. And um, it's snowball from there. It's emotional to me, you know, a lot of my family like, oh, you need to push it here, you need to push it there. It's like I'm slow paced with it because I wanted to, to do this thing the right way. Yeah. So, um, yeah, hopefully it gets out there on the wider screen and I'm able to be more 
prosperous with it. Yeah. 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 It feels real good to have a product that you can um, back up 100%. You can vouch for it. You don't yes. worry about, you know, you know you're not scanning. It's like, listen, mm -hmm. this is going to help. It's going to change things. You can, you can afford to be patient, you know, because it's not a hustle type of thing. Right. It's not a cash grab. It's just like, listen, once this, once it hits the fan, you know. Is, is this targeted for uh, strictly um, uh, black women or is this uh, motivational? Is this something that everybody can use? This is just this is something, Yeah, something for everybody. Um, there's no no race attached to it. Like everybody who used it, I have 30% uh, of my clientele is not African American. Wow. So uh, they use it also. They love it. They get the same results. You know. It get, works on any texture. It works on any texture. I wow. even have my guys use it on their beard. Okay, so it's, it's uh, yes. men even could use it too. So yes. it works. So it works. It just works the same on everybody. It's, everybody. Not, a it's not a female product. It's man. not a female product. Wow, that's um, interesting. Yeah, it works on beards. It works on you know. Any texture, any problem, especially for kids who have problems with tangles, their mom do their hair, do their hair at home. It helps with the, the detangling and it helps um, with the moisturizing. My name is Jasmine, and I work at Natural Sisters Hair Salon in Harlem. I started November 2015 when I met Mika, and it's been a blessing meeting her. Um, she's amazing, very talented, um, smart, efficient professional, and um, she works fast. Her brew products are the bomb. Well, listen, I'm gonna tell you this, right? You know, um, after listening and everything, getting to know you, mm -hmm. really proud of what you're doing, you know, I'm um, excited for you. Thank you. Uh, I, you know, we already know you're gonna be, you know, that it's already happening, it's just a matter of time. You know yes. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I think you should be definitely proud of yourself. You have accomplished some great things, you know. Um, Sometimes uh, a great accomplishment doesn't mean you're rich or some of these things. It's just some of the adversities in life. Not too many people come from those small centers and get out here and handle it like you. So I definitely want to commend you and I wish you the best. And Thank we're going to so. continue working together. Yes. And we're going to make yes. sure, we're going to make sure that. Uh, Natural Sister Salon and the group by Emmy is gonna is gonna um, is gonna shine. You know, it's gonna be successful. All right. So we see you cats in that.
way more good than bad. So 